So welcome back and in today's lesson we're going to have a think about ghost notes. Now we've looked at a few patterns and have our head around a few concepts in building a rhythm, we need to look at some of the finer details. So let's have a look at what I mean by ghost notes to start with. Here is the famous Purdy shuffle. When we listen to this I want you to think about the, the main hits of this beat but also to focus on the other things that the drummer is doing and consider maybe how that's affecting the feel or the swing or the vibe of what we're hearing. Memorable. Particularly let's uh, think about the snare drum here and how that is being very very busy in the composition even though the main strikes are quite few and far between. Cool. Here's a electronic track, uh, Mr. Bill and Killsmith. And let's listen to the sound design here, because in the world of electronic music, ghost notes aren't necessarily part of the drum kit, but often have the same effect. So in this clip, you're going to hear a few, yeah, kind of percussive, quick micro rhythms that add to the overall picture and swing of the piece. So this uh, this beat is very simple. Uh, let's listen to it again very quickly. But all these extra fills and glitches and chopped up pieces of rhythms really add together, uh, give it a bit of complexity that we'd otherwise be lacking. Right, back to the drawing board. I'm going to get uh, something very simple, an 808 kit. And we're going to make a very, very simple rhythm. And I'll play this clip. Okay, so there are many ways we might approach this and I want to start with a very, very simple idea that's probably quite obvious, which is to use the velocity of MIDI notes to differentiate between a main accent, like everything we're hearing here, and a ghost note. So I'm going to use my pen and draw in a few notes here, select them and make them very quiet using the velocity value. Do that again over here, and maybe we'll do that to the bass drums as well. Maybe we've gone a bit overboard. You might find that you need to fiddle around with the amount that the velocity affects the volume of the hit. I'm going to mess around with these values a little bit because of course real drummers don't hit things with the same loudness even if they try. do something very small or very quick. Small changes like this can really affect the, the feel of it. Cool. If we quickly go back to uh, Purdy, some of the, let's listen to the, uh, the snares a little bit. Remember 
So when we have a real drum kit and you hit a snare drum hard, lots of things happen. And the quality of the sound changes. It's perhaps a bit sharper, has a different release and attack. Maybe it's kind of a bit brighter as well. I'm going to simulate that on these main accents. I'm going to add some other hits and I'm going to do that with my kick drums as well. I'm going to add, let's say, for this, uh, a conga sound. So you can see here how we've quickly built up a rhythm to be, uh, let's say, a little bit more complex and multidimensional than the simple backbeat we programmed originally. I would definitely uh, recommend playing around with this technique and learning it and spending a bit of time. It can be quite fine and quite fiddly, but if you can get this done right, then you can really add a lot of feel to the rest of your music. Okay. I've just turned the grid to triplets and what I'm going to do now is take all of my ghost notes and I'm going to align them to the triplet grid. So in this case, I'm just using command U in Ableton Live to quantize things and whatever your DAW you're using, I'm sure the same thing is possible. So that was uh, your first idea. I'm just going to make our backbeat again from scratch. Something I'd like to also point out in this lesson that I encourage you to play with is that we often think of delay or echo as an effect or something we can use to create a certain sense of space or otherwise. We shouldn't underestimate how we can use it as a rhythmic tool. I'm adding a delay to my loop. Here's the drum loop on its own again. So I'm going to add a delay to it. I'm going to make it quite short and only use a bit of it. The wet value being how much we hear the delay. Not much feedback either. If I change these delays to be in uh, triplets, we get a different feel. As I'm playing, I might decide to move these values around live. As you hear, this kind of goes some way to simulate a real drummer. In that there's some randomness in what's happening, but it's all very rhythmically correct. We might also work off of the grid and create less syncopate synchronized swing and grooves. Cool. So ghost notes, how do we define this between a fill or any other kind of variation? Well, it depends how you look at it and what else is happening in your arrangement. So I'll see you next time.